Thank you to Kenneth Copeland Ministries for sowing the airtime for this broadcast. There's enough power in every sick room and in every hospital room to raise up that sick one that may be describing you. Yes, you yes. may be in a sick room. Yep. You may be in a hospital room. And I want to remind you, power is present. That power is there to do a work. Believe in what's present, not try to get something, but notice that he's already made it yours. It's present right where you're at. Say, I receive that power. I receive, I receive that power. I receive it right now. I receive it right From now. From the top of my head. From the top of my to head. the soles of my feet. The soles of my feet. Welcome. We're so glad that you're joining us today for Jesus the Healer. We are in the midst of a really, uh, really good series. We're talking about and ministering about the power of God. We're teaching out of my book called The Greatness of God's Power. And my, 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 we learning. We're learning and it is, I tell you what, it starts thrilling your spirit. When these truths start landing in you, you got, it's kind of hard to sit still sometimes. I mean, you just kind of want to do a little jig. You remember at holidays and your, your grandmother or your mother made your favorite dessert or your favorite dish or something and you take a bite of it. You're, you don't even put it on a plate. You know, you just get a spoon and take it right out of the dish. I can't tell you the number of times I've done that and then just turn around and do a little dance right there, right there. Just, you know, why? Because of the thrill. That was the thrill. Well, nothing thrills you like the Word. And when that Word lands in your spirit, you get thrilled. How do you know if something's in your spirit or not? Are you thrilled about it? Amen. And because uh, when it becomes real to you, you get on the inside of you. Woo, that's yeah. good stuff. Right. That's good stuff. So we've been having a good stuff series here. Right. And uh, we're, we've been starting in Ephesians chapter one with a prayer that Paul prayed for the believers. And it would benefit us to pray this prayer for each other, for ourselves, our family, our congregation members, uh, our local church, our pastors, all of these prayers we need to put in our mouth. Amen. These New Testament prayers. But let's look at Ephesians chapter one and verse 16. Paul said, I cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the father of glory may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. The eyes of your understanding, or we could say the eyes of your spirit, being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling, what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us who believe. So we've been breaking it down in, this, in these terms. What does it mean that you may know what is the hope of his calling? It means who you are in Christ. That's right. yeah that you may know what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints, all that belongs to you because you're in Christ. Yes. When you know what belongs to you in Christ, you quit praying for some things because you know it's already yours. Right. Amen. Amen. These things he's already made ours. Uh -huh. And we quit asking for something that already made ours and we just start drawing on it uh -huh. instead of asking for yes. it. And then uh, the third thing he was especially pointing out was that they might know what is exceeding greatness of his power to us who believe. That's talking about now what you can do because you got power. Yes. Now what you can receive, now what you can minister to people because there's power that's available to you. Amen. And uh, so this is the portion that we've been camping on, this last phrase in this series. Um, in Hosea chapter four and verse six, God was speaking and he said, my people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. Mm -hmm. Notice this, we're not destroyed because of the lack of power. Right. We're not destroyed because of the lack of finances. We're not destroyed because of the lack of peace. Yeah. We're not destroyed because of the lack of health. Mm -hmm. We're destroyed because we don't know that all these things have already been provided for. Right. And uh, when this word destroyed actually means, it, one definition of it, it means cut off. Mm -hmm. So we could say it this way, my people are cut off from the blessings that belong to them because of lack of knowledge. Yeah. That's true. Um, the devil wants to keep us in the seat of ignorance. He works to keep uh, the believers from understanding these truths of who we are in Christ, what belongs to us because we're in Christ and what we can do because we're in Christ. He wants to keep us ignorant of those things because then the door's open to him and we're robbed from. Amen. So we're learning. We're running ignorance out 
by putting the light of the word in. Amen. But we want it to dawn on our spirit. When it dawns on the inside of you, that's when you start getting results. Amen. Uh, I want to go ahead and read a passage uh, that we've read in the previous episodes, but to go further, I, I still want to read this again. It's something that Jesus said to Kenneth E. Hagan. Uh, Dad Hagen was a spiritual father to my husband and I for decades, and Jesus said this to him on one occasion. He said, when I was on the earth, I was the power of God. If people needed God's power, they had to get to where I was. That's why the multitudes thronged me to touch me. They had to touch me to touch power. But now the Holy Spirit is present on the earth, and He is the power of God. And He is present everywhere. Know this, Jesus couldn't be present everywhere at once when he was on, on this earth in, in, in flesh throughout his earthly ministry. The power was only where he was, but the Holy Spirit's not limited to a physical body. He's present everywhere and he's present in the body of Christ. If you're born again, he's present on the inside of you. Why? Greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. Amen. So Jesus said, uh, but now the Holy Spirit is present on the earth and he is the power of God. He is present everywhere. So power is present everywhere. Meaning this, you can draw on it any time of the day. 24 hours a day, seven days a week, you are wired with power. It doesn't come and go. It's in you to abide. The Bible talks about that there's an anointing that abides within you. What is that? The power of God. Why? So that at a moment's notice, you can turn to that power that's on the inside of you and release your faith in that power that's present and say, I draw on that power to work in this situation right now. Amen. Amen. So uh, we have to become skillful. It's our privilege to become skillful with the power. Right. Don't just say, well, I've got it. It doesn't do us any good to have something we're not skillful with. Right. We must all gain skill. And to gain skill, we have to know some things. Yes. Amen. First Corinthians chapter two and verse five, Paul said this. He said that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men. Don't be limited by the mental arena. Right. That's what he's talking about. Yes. Because the mental arena is limiting. Yes. Right. That your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men or what you can figure out. Mm-hmm. But your faith should stand in the power of God. Mm-hmm. So learn to put in your mouth, I believe in the power of God. All throughout the day, the power That's of God's right. working for me. Yes. Power of God's in me. The anointing, what is the power of God? The anointing of God. Yes. What's the anointing do? The word tells us that the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. So when the anointing comes into manifestation, it starts breaking things off. It starts driving things out. It starts running wrong, wrong things off from your life. Amen. But if we just, li- if we just leave that power in us unaccessed, then we can suffer when we should have been, vic- been in victory. We don't need to suffer when we have the anointing that abides within us. And we have to, we have to uh, become skillful. Well, uh, Hebrews chapter four and verse two, it was talking about the Hebrews that were delivered from Egypt. And it says in Hebrews chapter four, verse two, it says, for unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them. Notice unto them, that first generation didn't even arrive. They were supposed to arrive in the promised land. And for 40 years, they wandered. Why? Not due to lack of power. It's because they didn't add their faith to the power. So it says, for unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them. But the, but the word preached did not profit them. Isn't that amazing to think that what God said to them didn't bring them any benefit? Why? not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. Now, see, this is what we have to understand. To every miracle, to everything movement that God does in our life, God has a part to play and man has a part to play. Many times, many times those who are untaught about God and man's responsibility will lay everything off on God. Well, if it's God's will, well, if God wants to do it, well, whatever will be, will be. And they don't even mention man's part. But this right here mentions it wasn't due to God failing to do his part. It was because man didn't do his part in mixing faith with the power of God that was available to him. So know this, if you're going to be skillful with faith, you have to understand you have a part to play. You can't, we can't just put everything on God, but we have a part to bring. 
And is it really possible for the word preached to us not do anything in our life? Sure, yes. if we don't add our faith to it. So many times people can sit in church services and not receive a thing. The life of God being offered them, the power of God being preached to them, the word of God being preached to them and they walk out completely unchanged. Why? They didn't take it in and didn't mix faith with it. Let's not be, let's not be guilty of that. Amen. When the word is preached, we say, I mix my faith with that. I implement that. I'm a doer of that. I put that in place in my life. That's moving in my life. Amen. When it's not just, can I tell you the life, the successful life of a Christian is not just showing up at church and saying, I'm finished. I showed up. No, that's the beginning at church. We learn what we have to do once we leave that building. The word is taught to us of what to implement every day to learn our part of every day living the word. Amen. So how do you mix faith with the word? Your tongue is the mixer. Your tongue is the mixer. When the word is preached, faith comes into your heart. But the faith that's in your heart must be released for it to benefit you. So the faith in your heart is released through what you say. You you hear your pastor preach about Jesus being the healer. You have to say, he's my healer. He's my healer right now. His power is working in me right now. Your faith, your tongue just mixed your faith in with that power. Haven't you ever... uh, I try to stay away from this, but it's called cooking. Um, <laughs> I can do a little bit. I can do a little bit. And I'm always so impressed by others who are really good at it. <laughs> That's an impressive work for me. But Have you ever seen uh, a cake recipe? And they'll say you have dry ingredients, you have wet ingredients. And they'll say stir all the dry ingredients up. And then they'll say, add your wet ingredients. You don't just say, here's the dry ingredients. Here's the wet ingredients. And you dump it on the same bowl and say, all right, let's cook it. (laughs) Won't work. All the ingredients are there. All the ingredients are there. Listen to that. All the ingredients are there. But you try to, in that form, you try to dump the dry and the wet ingredients together in the same pan without mixing them and you're, it's not going to turn out right. That's why things don't turn out right in people's lives. All the ingredients are there. The power is there. The faith is there. The word is there, but it's not mixed. You got to mix it. Your tongue, your tongue is the mixer. Your tongue is the mixer. What's that mean? You have to speak that word. When you speak that word, it mixes it into your need. And then your need changes. Your need gets met. Your need gets supplied because you mix the answer of the word in with your need. Mix it, mix it, mix it, mix it. Now, what if I say, okay, I'm going to mix these these ingredients for the cake. And I take take me a spoon and I walk over and I go, one thing. (laughs) It's mixed in a measure, but it's not fully mixed. You try to pour that one spoon stir into the planet and you say, and you pour it in the, and the family tries to eat it and go, what is this? I don't know. I put all the ingredients in. Did you mix it? Yeah. Well, how long did you mix it? One time. Well, you can't just stir the spoon one time and get a full mix. You can't just say something once and get the fullness of God's power. You got to say it and say it and say it. How, do you know that in, when some recipes, again, I try to stay away from them, but <laughs> with some recipes, you have to start, let's say you're making like a caramel sauce. You have to put those ingredients over the heat and you have to stir hard and fast the whole time. Yes. Do you know that people will stir till their arm is so tired? It's burning. <laughs> their, their muscle is burning. They have, why? To keep, it from, to keep it from being ruined. Yes. What is that? People realize there has to be much stirring to get certain results. Results that are worth eating. <laughs> And so sometimes we say, well, I said he's my healer last week. (laughs) Well, what's that mean? You walked over, all the ingredients are there. But you walked over and you stirred one spoonful. And then you walked off and said, I don't know why it's not mixed. 
Or let's say this, you start on Monday. <laughs> See these kitchen lessons. Come here. We'll, te we'll teach you great cooking tips here. <laughs> Let's say on a Monday, you're going to make a cake. You put all the dry ingredients, the wet ingredients. You give it one stir. You come back Tuesday. You give it another stir. You come back Wednesday. You give it another stir. It's still not stirred, even after all those That's several right. days. Right. How bad do you want it? How quick do you want it to cook? How quick do you want it to come out right determines how, how much stirring you'll do. What's that mean? How bad do you want it determines how much you'll say it. How much you'll mix that, using your, your mixture of the tongue to mix your faith in with that word. If you want it a lot, you say it a lot. If you don't want it much, you forget to say it. Who knew? that the kitchen could teach you how to receive from God. And who knew that someone that doesn't cook could teach you? <laughs> oh, well, you get the point. Jesus said in Mark eleven twenty three, 23, whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the, into the sea, shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith, believe those things which he saith, shall come to pass. Look at this. He shall have whatsoever he saith. He shall have whatsoever he saith. He shall have whatsoever he saith. It doesn't say that he shall have what he doesn't say. He will have what he says. If he says fear, he'll have fear. If he says healing, he'll have healing. If he talks sickness, he'll have sickness. If he, talks, if he talks doubt, he'll have doubt. If he talks faith, he'll have faith. He shall have whatsoever he saith, good or bad. Now, if you want a lot of something, then say it more. The more you say it, the more you have it. The less you say it, the less you have it. Amen. So we could say this, the more you stir it, the quicker you eat it. <laughs> and the less you stir it prolongs the manifestation. Takes time. It takes, it takes long. Some things have taken longer to come to pass than they should have. What about this? Uh, you say, well, if it's God's will, it'll come to pass. I don't know what scripture you're basing that on. I don't know what scripture you're basing that on. Because that didn't work for the Hebrews. When God delivered, God, there were mighty wonders worked to get them into the promised land and, uh, or to get them out of Egypt so that they could go into the promised land. That first generation, they would not mix faith with what God said. So they wandered for 40 years. What did they do? They prolonged their manifestation. And in fact, that first generation never even got to arrive it was the second generation that went in because they had faith enough to do what God said. So what's this mean? We can prolong our manifestation by, by saying it very little what we're believing. Or we can speed up our manifestation. How do we speed up that manifestation? Getting that word fed into us. Meditate on it and speaking it. Speaking it. Now, people will say, now know this. Well, Pastor Nancy, I've been saying it a lot. I've been saying it a lot. Does it help you to stir a lot an empty bowl? Empty and just making lots of motion. Right. You can even wow. make sound, that, that oh. spoon making the sound of mixing. Wow. But if there's, no, if there's not anything full in there. So what's that mean? It's not just, I, I'm just going to say it. I'm just going to say it. I, Pastor Nancy said, say it. I'm going to say it. By his stripes, I'm healed. By his stripes, I'm healed. By his stripes, I'm healed. But if there's no revelation of it in you right. and you're not pouring that word in you, yeah. see, you need to have the ingredients poured into the vessel, yes. the word poured into your spirit. Yes. And then you start mixing. There's something there to mix. Yes. And now it'll serve up a blessing in your life. Amen. 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 Now, you still with me after our cooking lesson? Okay. Romans chapter 10 and verse 17. 
Romans chapter 10 and verse 17. So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. What's this mean? Faith doesn't come just by hearing anything. You had to be hearing the right thing. So it spells out what's the right thing, the word of God. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God or hearing what God's saying. Um, Although faith comes by hearing, Mm -hmm. faith does not operate by hearing. Faith is not released by hearing. Mm -hmm. Now, once faith comes, it has to be released or it doesn't matter that it came. It won't benefit you until it's released. Mm -hmm. We don't benefit from faith just because it came. We benefit from faith once it's released. Mm -hmm. So the benefit is in faith coming, but in it being released. So the action of faith is not complete just at the coming. Mm -hmm. It's the faith comes, the faith released. Faith comes, faith released. It's an ongoing action, not just come, 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 Mm -hmm. come, and never releasing it. Many times people, when they're faced with a need, they'll, they'll pick up the Bible, they'll pick up a book, they'll listen to a preach tape, and they just listen, 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 listen. That's good. That's good. Why? Because faith is coming. But if it just comes, 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 and you're not a doer of that word, it doesn't matter. Uh, That word won't benefit you. If you don't put that word in your mouth, you speak that word, release that word. So faith is released two ways, through what you say and through what you do. Amen. Amen. Now, Romans 10 and verse 10, let's back up a few verses. Romans 10 verse 10 says this, For with the heart, man believeth. Look at this. With the heart, man believes. You can't believe. You can't believe with your mind. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Can't believe with your emotions. Mm -hmm. Right. You believe with the heart. Yes. What's that mean? The spirit of man. Mm -hmm. Not talking about the organ of the heart. Uh You can't believe God with the organ of the heart any more than you believe Him with your kidneys, Mm -hmm. your liver. Those are organs. When he's talking about the heart, he's not talking about the the physical organ. He's talking about the center of man's being. The heart of that man's being is his spirit. So we could say this, for with the heart or with the spirit, man believeth unto righteousness. And with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. So know this, the faith that's in your heart has to become a confession of your mouth. So faith has to be in two places, in your heart, then in your mouth. Mm -hmm. So it has to come to the heart and it has to be released through the mouth. Mm -hmm. Come to the heart, release through the mouth. Mm -hmm. Come to the heart, release through the mouth. And I have had people ask me and they ask me these questions. They say, Pastor Nancy, due to, uh, they've written us and, or, you know, and they contact us somehow and they say, due to a physical problem, I can't speak. You can still speak in a way, saying it to yourself. Because when you're saying something to yourself, you're still saying it. It's not volume only that means you're saying it. Because people can speak faith words out in the hearing of others and to themselves, they're talking doubt. Mm -hmm. To their self, they're talking fear. And their faith words that are spoken out loud will not work Mm -hmm. as long as they're saying the wrong thing to themselves. So know this, saying things within yourself Mm -hmm. as much as you can, you're still saying. Amen. 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 Um, So faith in your heart Mm -hmm. has to find its way into what you're saying. Okay? It has to be in two places. Your faith that's in your heart is silent until you put it in your mouth. Mm -hmm. Your faith can't be heard until you say something. People would say, um, Pastor Nancy, I don't know if I, if I understand what it means to speak out of my heart, these faith words out of my heart. What does that mean? Well, let me ask you this. If you're speaking out of your heart, have you ever told someone you love them? A child, a spouse, a family member, I love you. Did you mean it? Yes, I meant it. That's your heart. You just said it out of your heart. Did you mean it? So when you say, by his stripes I'm healed, did you mean it? He's my provider. Did you mean it? You see, when you mean it, that's saying it out of your heart. You say, well, Pastor Nancy, 
I know I should mean it, but it doesn't feel like I do mean it. Keep saying it. Just keep saying it. Just keep saying it. Because you'll move into meaning it. The more you hear, the more you'll believe. Amen? Amen. So you say, notice this. um, And let me read Romans 10, 10 this way. Again, for with the heart, man believeth unto righteousness. And with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. If you're endeavoring to believe God for something and you're feeling overwhelmed, that feeling of overwhelm is coming because you're trying to believe Him with your mind. You try to believe with your mind and there's no faith in your mind. And then you feel overwhelmed because I'm trying to believe, but I'm overwhelmed because you got your mind involved, not your heart involved. Amen. Because the heart can believe what the mind cannot believe. Now, um, we're to have faith thoughts. You can sow the word in your heart, renew your mind so that your mind agrees with the faith that's in your heart and doesn't argue against it. But you can't believe God with the mind. For with the heart, man believeth unto righteousness. Look at this. And with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. We could read it this way. And with the mouth, confession is made unto manifestation. Whether what you need is salvation, whether what you need is healing, whether what you need is prosperity, confession is made unto manifestation. So, Pastor Nancy, how long do I have to say it? Till it manifests. For with the heart, man believes, and with the mouth, confession is made until it manifests. Amen. Well, we've been teaching out of my book, The Greatness of God's Power, and it is great. It is great. We want you to, we want you to study it. We want you to feed on these truths, get them in you so that you become a skillful worker with them. Amen. You can get your copy of this, of this book by going to our website at jesusthehealer.org and purchase your copy there. And until next time, remember this, Jesus is the healer. God bless you. To watch or listen to today's message and other messages by Nancy Dufresne, visit DufresneMinistries.org. In Nancy Dufresne's classic book, The Greatness of God's Power, She teaches how God wants us to know His power that is in our direction. It belongs to us. Order this book now at DufresneMinistries.org. Join us for our Jesus the Healer Crusade in Collinsville, Oklahoma, at a glorious church with Pastors Chip and Candace Brim, October 6th through the 10th. For more information and to register, please visit our website at DufresneMinistries.org. I invite you to get hold of my book called Daily Healing Bread from God's Table. It's a daily devotional on the subject of divine healing. I encourage you to feed yourself every day on the truths of healing and faith because either you're going to need it or someone you come in contact with is going to need it. You can order this book by going to JesusTheHealer.org. God bless you. We trust you've enjoyed this message. Visit us at DufresneMinistries.org to learn of our upcoming meetings, share your testimony, submit a prayer request, or visit our online store. Thank you to the friends and partners of Dufresne Ministries for making this production possible. This is Nancy Dufresne, and I want to extend an invitation to you to become a partner with Dufresne Ministries today. God bless you. Partnership helps with crusades held nationwide and abroad, printing and publishing of books and other materials, operational costs in TV and other media broadcasts. For more information and to sign up to become a partner, go to DufresneMinistries.org.